I've just finished my first John Wyndham book, Out of the Deeps, which was uh, the American title. The European title was The Kraken Awakes, I think. Like I said, I've not read Day of the Triffids. I've not read The Chrysalids. I've not read Chalky. This is my first John Wyndham. I just know that he is an author that is highly esteemed by people. And I think I see why. I liked the book. I didn't love the book. I did like it. And I'm going to talk about this without spoilers, without severe spoilers. There's really not that much to spoil in this book, though. Uh, so it's kind of a 1953 retelling of War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, which is actually invoked specifically in the narrative of the book. The characters talk about how War of the Worlds shaped people's expectations of what an alien invasion would look like, which is in keeping with some of the central themes at play in the book. This book really is a piece of social satire first and a science fiction story second, which is both to its credit and a little bit to its detriment. Social satire from 1953 cannot help but be a little bit dated. I am impressed that chunks of it feel very non-dated, especially in context of the coronavirus crisis, because this book really is about how the media copes with a crisis and also how major political bodies in the world cope with slash fail to cope with major threats and major disruptions and disasters. The basic premise of the book is that a husband and wife team who are radio news broadcasters where they write, um, they write copy to be read on radio news broadcasts in the UK witness a giant or a series of five giant fireballs descending from the sky and crashing into the ocean near where they are observing on the deck of a cruise ship out at sea. And this becomes a recurrent phenomenon across the world of people seeing these big red fireballs traveling at thousands of miles an hour and crashing into the ocean. And these are the germinal seeds of an alien invasion threat that takes up residence in the deepest parts of the ocean and create problems and situations uh, for human beings in general because they're you know scattered across all the world oceans so it's it's really it's a comedy it's a comedy with a little bit of sci-fi horror mixed into it and it is clever it's not laugh out loud funny but it is i like the wryness i like the the kind of simmering exasperation and disillusionment at the, the heart of the book. Because like War of the Worlds, actually, it's a lot of um, foot dragging, a lot of misinformation, a lot of denialism, and a lot of herd mentality and panic and competence and descent into complete chaos as the alien threat mounts. And there's this Cassandra character, the scientist who early on figures out, deduces what the fireballs really are and the threat that is posed by them and keeps voicing these these public condemnations of of how world governments are failing to respond properly that go unheeded. So the parts of it about the kind of the portrayal of the no nothingism, the the, the, the jingoism, the um, world governments offering these ineffectual token resistances to the aliens just to please public opinion, and the media's complicity in pumping the brakes on any kind of significant uh, understanding of the threat or, or action taken about it is great. I think it's, it is fully contemporary. Uh, I think it, it reads quite well. And there's a part, there's a, a plot device later in the book that I can't reveal without spoiling it that is especially prescient, uh, eerily prescient. And I think the book accidentally became 
a wonderful, profound allegory for some modern uh, problems that we are facing. Like I said, though, some of it did not age that well. There's a lot of uh, Wyndham pounding his chest and sharpening his pen against the Soviet Union and communist propaganda at this point. It just fails to pack quite a punch. It's just, yeah, we get it, you know, uh, Soviet officials pillorying Western politicians as capitalist pig dogs, quoting Marx, talking about dialectical materialism. It just, it, it doesn't feel that clever anymore. Everything else is good. Uh, the characters are smart. They're not, they are kind of stock characters, but he's great with dialogue. They have very kind of clever, free-flowing and natural seeming dialogue with one another. And there are emotional stakes. It does work just as a, a story. It is slightly boring. It's pretty slow. Nothing really happens after the stage is set with all the fireball stuff until around halfway through the book is when the action actually kicks in. And before that, it's it's all this examination of how the news works. And there's not, there there is a big payoff towards the end of the book. Things definitely pick up, but it doesn't feel like there's that much action in the book. The aliens themselves are almost ba a background piece the aliens are mostly out of frame in the whole story, which is fine. But it's a less exciting read than War of the Worlds because of it. Also, the ending is not terribly satisfying. It's, it's a very Hollywood-type ending. And considering how bleak the story is preceding the ending, I really wonder if it was... Wyndham being under some kind of editorial obligation to wrap it up in that way. And I, I won't, again, try to spoil it too much. But it's a neat little nugget of period satire that is surprisingly deft for when it was written. And it does have legs and longevity and it has, a, a, I think, a pretty remarkable shelf life. I was not terribly swept away by the book though so it's kind of an academic appreciation for how it was written and the content in it i would recommend it it's a quick read but it's not that exciting of a read it's just kind of a neat little chunk of an odd flavor that you don't get that much in science fiction so i would i would read his other works i know that they're talked about a lot more than this one is and I'm curious, and I, obviously he's a writer of skill, so I don't re regret reading it. It's not my favorite sci-fi book. It, it, well, I didn't find it that groundbreaking. I like Wells more still. I think Wells actually made more profound points in War of the Worlds than uh, Wyndham made in this. I think this is more specific. It's more grounded in a particular time and place context than War of the Worlds, which has a lot more, a much more, a much higher aerial view of human affairs than, than this one does. And I think says a little bit smarter things in, in a little bit more of a subtle way. But this is carrying on that tradition of that book and doing service to it. So I, it was a good read. And I love the cover. That's why I picked it up. I actually got this at a swap meet for free, basically. It's a first edition paperback. And uh, I, I just was really charmed by its aesthetics. And this is one occasion when period cover art actually led me to a pretty good book.